everyone, and welcome to day two of Planet's third annual Explore Conference. I'm so glad that you could be with us today. Yesterday, we heard about transformation happening in agriculture and the future of agile aerospace, along with Planet's product strategy. But today, we have even more fresh ideas and thoughtful speakers in store for you. So you are among the thousands with us who are here joining in to build a more vibrant future. Welcome. For those that don't know me, I'm Robbie Shingler. I'm the co-founder and chief strategy officer at Planet. And I'm a physicist by training. I spent my undergraduate years at Santa Clara University just south of San Francisco. And as a college student, I dreamed of a career in space. I had the opportunity to be part of student teams that built small satellites in undergrad, and we launched them into space. I got hooked. I was also lucky to get a research job at NASA Ames Research Center. And there, I spent most of my time in a windowless basement conducting experiments. We wanted to understand how life evolves on planets, all the way at the molecular level. The work was fascinating, but also, to be quite honest, a, a little quiet and lonely for me. But then my world expanded. I was selected for an incredible opportunity to study with 60 other master's students from 25 countries. After a lifetime of living in California and Minnesota, I had the experience to go to Strasbourg, France, at the International Space University. It was a cultural and intellectual awakening for me. As an undergrad, I stuck to physics and engineering. But in France, I learned how economics, law, and governance shaped the future of our society. And all of that was through the lens of space. I was also able to attend meetings at the United Nations. And I saw firsthand how nations and intergovernmental bodies come together to debate human rights, sustainability, and security all around the world. It was eye-opening for me. I gained a sense of urgency and opportunity that informed how we founded Planet as a company that could bring people together to address the biggest challenges of today. And we have a unique opportunity and an urgent need to create a regenerative and a sustainable society. So I mentioned before that I learned modern history from the perspective of space and the role that it played in shaping the world that we have today. In the 1960s, during the Cold War, space was established as a global commons. Global commons are physical and virtual areas where resources are shared and coordinated at the international level. Designating space as a global commons allowed for nations to freely launch satellites to orbit and orbit the planet freely, just like a ship can sail in the deep ocean. By attaching cameras to satellites, the United States and former Soviet Union gained an understanding of the world well beyond their borders. And this level of transparency paved the way for the 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty to become international law. For the very first time, satellites orbiting above provided facts needed to verify compliance with the new law. So in this way, tensions were diffused. Satellites in space supported de-escalation of the nuclear arms race right at the height of the Cold War. The world witnessed how cooperation in space laid the foundation for a more open and peaceful world. What we learn from this history is that clear and transparent view from space can create a more peaceful and secure Earth. When we all look up, we see the same sky. And when you look at the Earth from space, you don't see borders. You see a global community and ecosystems connected by visible patterns and rapid change. Smoke from a fire here in California can be tracked all the way to the Netherlands. A conflict in one country can lead to resource scarcity in a neighboring country. And from space, you can see how truly interconnected we all are. And just as importantly, you can see how these connections are changing. My co-founders and I started Planet 10 years ago. 
Our goal was to draw insights from space to help life on Earth. We were inspired by the projects that we worked at at NASA and our experience with the United Nations. And our hypothesis was that we could revolutionize how satellites were made and operated to achieve the impossible, to image the entire world every day. And while we were at it, we'd advance global transparency in a responsible manner. So working in our garage, and I know it's cliche, but it's the truth, uh, we set out to find investors to help us shape and build our mission-aligned business. And we prioritized three categories of potential investors. One, we wanted someone who knew about movement building, open source, open data, and community participation. Two, we wanted somebody who knew how to do good in society, as well as doing extremely well in the market. And three, we wanted someone who understood deep technology and how software and hardware together can disrupt established industries and become category defining. As good physicists as the three of us were, we research all categories and rank them and start at the top of the list. It was a truly important step to sh in the shape of our progress as we were able to recruit each of these luminaries as an investor and an advisor when we just got started. Tim O'Reilly for open and movement building. Jeff Skoll for social entrepreneurship. And Steve Jurvetson for industry deep technology. I'm sharing this with you not to drop big names, but to illustrate how we have taken care to bring intentionality into every key decision we make at Planet and how that has been one of what I believe one of our core factors of our success. As the company grew, we took more steps to ensure that we were building a company that could deliver on that mission. That's the mindset that shaped our values or our shared agreement with one another, the product principles that we hold ourselves to, and the business model that we choose. For example, we formed an ethics committee internally to our company before we even launched our first satellite. And that was to ensure that anyone in the company could flag a concern that they have. So I'm super proud of what we built over the last decade. But the work is not over. Disrupting long-standing market and cultural patterns for the greater good is hard. Look, I'm an optimist with an MBA. So I truly believe that mission-aligned businesses are the most promising levers that we have to create social change. And with Planet, I believe that we have a unique opportunity to do good at scale while creating tremendous value for everyone involved, from investors to philanthropists and from businesses to society at large. Let me give you an example of why I'm so optimistic. In a deep partnership with Vulcan, a foundation started by the late Paul G. Allen, co-founder and, and philanthropist, we created the Allen Coral Atlas. It really was a product of bringing together renowned scientific institutions, the University of Arizona and the University of Queensland in Australia. And we had an audacious goal, to map and monitor the entire Earth's coral reefs in unprecedented detail for the very first time. This map is now complete and available online. But this data is already leading to ambitious new projects by countries like Fiji and Sri Lanka, aimed at improving coastline management and protecting new maritime protected areas. This is a great example of how new partnerships built around accessible data and tools allow for nations to better steward their natural resources. So we have a saying here at Planet that we live in a world of 21st century problems within a 20th century economic system and 19th century institutions. As a citizen, we tend to look to our oldest of institutions to solve the problems of our time. But as we are increasingly seeing, alone they are not able to respond to the change at the speed that is necessary. 20th century business as usual incentivizes companies to make as much money as possible. It limits the scope of their civic responsibility primarily to their shareholders. And we are already seeing that this risk created
by this approach is becoming increasingly unacceptable. We are now moving beyond the limits of the trust me economy, where closed opaque systems, a lack of accountability, and winner-take-all behavior reign supreme. And today, we're at the precipice of a new paradigm, stakeholder capitalism. In order to adapt to rapid change, the global economy will be forced to rebalance. It needs to reflect the risks that we face and recognize the value of our common and limited resources. The incentives are changing. Businesses are now being judged not only on their bottom line, but on the long-term impact that they're having on the world. This transformation is already taking place, and it's only going to accelerate. At Planet, where trust is central to our identity, we see ourselves at the forefront of a new economic paradigm that we've been calling the truth economy. The truth economy is a new way of accounting for human and natural capital that has historically been invisible and undervalued. As the capital of the commons becomes visible and fungible, we will see new modes of value exchange that promote economic stability, security, and sustainability. And the companies who lead this transition will outcompete those who do not. In order to accelerate the move toward a truth economy, we must have data that are accessible, trusted, and verifiable. And the stakes could not be higher. There's no denying it. Dramatic climate change threatens to disrupt and destabilize many of the systems on which human societies and economies depend. Intensifying disasters will increasingly impact food security for millions of people, supply chain integrity, and economic stability. Driven by these changes, governments, consumers, employees, and investors the flock to support businesses and policymaking approaches that will drive growth while reducing risk and rebuilding trust. And in short, we believe rapid adoption of, to global climate and economic change will unleash a race for positive change. This transformation will be powered by truth economy actors and who will provide the information needed to adapt. But sometimes we need different data in order to make the invisible visible and to bring people to a common set of facts. Earlier this year, we had the privilege to co-found Carbon Mapper, a new public-private partnership focused on better detecting emissions from space. We partnered with a cross-sector coalition to develop a new sensor that can measure emissions at the very local level. Working with governments in the very beginning, we can ensure effective regulatory processes will be put in place and ready to utilize this data once it becomes available. This allows for us to make these emissions measurements accessible, trusted, and verifiable. And with that, governments will be able to set new economic incentives, sometimes carrots, sometimes sticks, but for businesses to adapt their operations to minimize negative global impact and risk. So as you can see, the Earth observation ecosystem can rise up to today's challenges and accelerate the truth economy in the 21st century. In the first decade of Planet, we built a mission-aligned company that changed the aerospace industry and did something that was once unimaginable, imaging the whole surface of the Earth every day. And kicking off our second decade, we are becoming a public company to build the infrastructure needed for every institution on Earth to navigate this age of rapid change. And we're doing this with the same intentionality that we brought when we started Planet. In order to bake our mission into the company, we are choosing to go public as a public benefit corporation. Becoming a public benefit corporation, or PBC, is the next step for Planet as we grow and become a lighthouse for the truth economy. And becoming a PBC means that Planet's leaders, our founders, board, executives, all at every level, must consider shareholder interests in balance with other stakeholders, including the environmental impact and social factors of our product. Planet's public benefit purpose 
is to accelerate humanity toward a more sustainable, secure, and prosperous world by illuminating environmental and social change. This means we're really creating this together with all of our stakeholders in mind, including you. To illustrate this, I want to share another example of what's possible by enabling new partnerships that accelerate visualizing natural capital. We've built a partnership with the Norwegian government to build on a new data standard for forestry and its impact. To do this, we made a massive amount of forest data available to 64 countries across the Earth's tropical belt. This data is accessible to those governments, the United Nations, and nonprofit partners. And the data is now becoming a standard in UN programs where wealthy countries pay forest holding countries to conserve their forests. This project is a major step towards effectively valuing natural capital. It shows that we can bring the global community around a common source of truth and take action. And this is essential if we are to ensure that the lungs of the earth are healthy for generations to come. But you don't have to be a country or in a big company to access the power of the truth economy. In June of this year, a graduate student at the Middlebury Institute used our data to validate concerns about a buildup of a new ICBM silo site in China. By pouring through our data, he found verifiable evidence showing that over 100 new missile silos were recently built in a Chinese desert. And within days of this discovery, it was being reported by journalists all around the world, shining light on a profound but undiscovered development. And one month later, researchers at the Federation of American Scientists used our data to identify a second missile silo field in China, shocking security experts and researchers the world over. In both those cases, it was Planet's unique daily monitoring capability that enabled researchers to spot these important developments in a really remote desert. Every day, there are examples like this one. When we can see and understand developments in this way, we can foster transparency and greater stability. The transition to the truth economy will be driven by many collaborations like these. And in the coming race to adapt to unprecedented global change, Planet is only but one player. Together, we can understand and respond to real world transformations in real time. And there's a huge opportunity for any individual or any institution to play a role in this transformation. And this has never been possible before. At Planet, our currency is trusted, accessible, and verifiable information. We're generating that kind of currency every day. So whether you're a citizen, a financial analyst, a journalist, a scientist, a government representative, or a company leader, we invite you to join us to advance the truth economy. Thank you.